Did you know that in Christendom, Easter is actually celebrated on two different dates? Stay with me till the end, and I'll explain how and why that is. Welcome to Typology and Prophecy. My name is Kyle. This is a podcast dedicated to the study of the Bible through the methodology of typology. In this episode, we're talking about the origins of Easter. Now, if you ask people today to explain the origins of Easter, you're most likely going to get one of two answers. One group will say that it originated as a celebration of the resurrection. The other group will say that it originated as a pagan celebration that was later Christianized. Now, if we're talking about what Easter is today, there is likely an element of truth in either one of these answers. However, if we are strictly talking about its origins, then neither of these answers are correct. Let me read to you the origin story for what is today celebrated as Easter. Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be your beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. Verse 5. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. Now you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight. And they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they eat it. Then they shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire with unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. And thus you shall eat it with a belt on your waist, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. You shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Yes, that's right. Passover, the feast instituted in Egypt the night before they left, this is the origins of what is today celebrated as Easter. And to state the obvious, Passover is neither pagan nor a celebration of the resurrection. Now the reason this connection is not so obvious for those of us who are English speakers is because of the word Easter itself. If you listen to those who argue that Easter is a celebration that originated in paganism, typically one of the points that they will make is to point out the etymology of the word and show how it is derived from Germanic and Old English words that are associated with the spring or the celebration of the goddess of the spring. Or you may encounter a more simplistic approach where they simply point out that the words Easter and Ishtar sound very similar to each other. Of course, Ishtar is the pagan goddess of fertility. So there you have it, the smoking gun proving the pagan origins of Easter. However, the problem with this approach is that no one in the early church spoke English, which means that nothing, not a single point, fact or fiction, regarding the etymology of the English word Easter tells us anything about what the early church was celebrating. If we want to understand from the perspective of the early church what they believed they were celebrating, we need to look at what they called the celebration in their own language. Now, the two primary languages of the Roman Empire were Latin and Greek. In Latin and Greek, the Christian celebration we call Easter was, and still is, called Pascha, which is a derivative of the Aramaic and Hebrew words for Passover. In other words, if we were to refer to it in English, the same way that the early church did in Latin and Greek, we would call the annual celebration Passover rather than Easter. Now, I agree that Easter does sound very paganish, but Passover does not. Now, let's be clear here. The early church was not celebrating Passover in the exact same context that the Jews had from the time they came out of Egypt. Rather, they understood the typological connection between Christ 
and the Passover lamb. As Paul wrote, For indeed Christ, our Passover, was sacrificed for us. However, notwithstanding the, in this case, appropriate Christianization of the feast day, the early church did in fact continue to celebrate the Passover feast that God had instituted in Egypt. Now, I mentioned in the opening that today there are two Easter's, or shall we say, two Passovers that are celebrated in Christendom. In this year, which is 2023, Christians in the West, i.e. Catholics and Protestants, they will celebrate Easter on April 9th, while Christians in the East, i.e. Eastern Orthodox, they will celebrate Easter one week later on April 16th. Now we should note that they do not always follow each other by one week. While rare, sometimes they fall on the same day, and in other years they fall on days that are farther apart than just one week. Now why is this? It's because the Eastern Orthodox continue to calculate the dating of Easter based on the original Julian calendar. However, the Roman Catholics now use the Gregorian calendar, first introduced by Pope Gregory XIII in AD 1582. Now, even if you use the same formula to calculate the day, if you use different calendars, you will most oftentimes arrive at different dates. So there you have it. That's why we have two Easter's that are celebrated in Christendom. Now, this is important to point out because it illustrates the rhyme and repetition of human nature throughout history. Not only do we have two different dates for Easter today, with a clear line of distinction involving the East versus the West, so likewise this was the case in the second century church as well. I'll read to you an account of what I'm talking about directly from church father and church historian Gelsibius of Caesarea in just a moment. But first let me read to you this verse from Leviticus regarding the celebration of the Passover. These are the feasts of the Lord, holy convocations which you shall proclaim at their appointed times. On the fourteenth day of the first month at twilight is the Lord's Passover. So according to God, in Leviticus, Passover was to be celebrated on 14 Nisan. No, this is not a reference to the Japanese car. Rather, it is the name of the first month of the Jewish calendar, which, mind you, was a lunar calendar, not the solar calendar that the Romans used. We'll be reading from 340 AD, Church History, Book 5, Chapter 23, under the subtitle, The Question Then Agitated Concerning the Passover. We read, A question of no small importance arose at that time, this would be at the time of Pope Victor I, A.D. 190. For the parishes of all Asia, these are the churches in the eastern part of the empire, as from an older tradition, as in from Leviticus and the Gospels, held that the fourteenth day of the moon, on which the day the Jews were commanded to sacrifice the lamb, should be observed as the feast of the Savior's Passover. It was therefore necessary to end their fast on that day, whatever day of the week it should happen to be. But it was not the custom of the churches in the rest of the world, i.e. the West, to end it at that time, as they observed the practice which from apostolic tradition has prevailed to this present time, of terminating the fast on no other day than that of the resurrection of our Savior. Now the fundamental disagreement here was whether Passover should be kept on 14 Nisan, as is instructed by God in Leviticus, and was practiced by Jesus and the Apostles in the Gospels, regardless of what day of the week it happened to fall on, or whether it should always be kept on a Sunday, the day of Christ's resurrection. Now I think we can have a legitimate debate over whether or not Christians are required to keep the feast days. However, this is not the debate going on here for it's clear that they continued to keep Passover, albeit with the added typological implications that they viewed Christ's death on the cross as the Passover sacrifice. But here's the thing. If you're going to continue to keep Passover, why would you deviate from the instructions that God gave for when to celebrate Passover? I mean, think about this. When Jesus died as our Passover lamb, 
Did he deviate from the prescribed date set for it in Scripture? Or did he not, in fact, die exactly on 14 Nisan, the actual date for Passover? The churches in the East concluded that there was not sufficient reason to break with either Scripture or the tradition of their bishops and the apostles associated with their churches, in which they had kept for over 150 years at this point. Now understand that the controversy over this issue was of no small matter. It rose to the level of an attempted mass excommunication. In haste, Pope Victor I issued an excommunication for all the bishops in Asia. However, an interesting bit of history that tends towards proving that the Bishop of Rome was not in fact the supreme pontiff or the head of the church at this time is the fact that Victor was sharply rebuked and forced to retract his excommunications. A large degree of credit for his role as peacemaker in this matter was given to Irenaeus, most commonly known today as a prominent church father and the author of Against Heresies. Eusebius recorded the response to Victor by the Eastern bishops. We read, But the bishops of Asia, led by Polycrates, decided to hold to the old custom handed down to them. He himself, in a letter which he addressed to Victor and the Church of Rome, set forth in the following words the tradition which had come down to him. We observe the exact day, neither adding nor taking away, for in Asia also great lights have fallen asleep, which shall rise again on the day of the Lord's coming, when he shall come with glory from heaven and shall seek out all the saints. Among these are Philip, one of the twelve apostles, who fell asleep in Heropolis, and his two aged virgin daughters, and another daughter who lived in the Holy Spirit and now rests in Ephesus. And moreover, John, who was both a witness and a teacher, who reclined upon the bosom of the Lord, and being a priest wore the sacerdotal plate, he fell asleep at Ephesus. And Polycarp in Smyrna, who was a bishop and a martyr. All these observed the fourteenth day of the Passover according to the gospel, deviating in no respect, but following the rule of faith. I also, Polycrates, the least of you all, do according to the tradition of my relatives, some of whom I have closely followed. For seven of my relatives were bishops, and I am the eighth. My relatives always observed the day when the people put away the leaven. I, therefore, brethren, who have lived sixty-five years in the Lord, and have met with the brethren throughout the world, and have gone through every holy scripture, am not affrighted by terrifying words. For those greater than I have said, we ought to obey God rather than man. So from these two excerpts from Eusebius, we can clearly see that one, they were in fact keeping Passover, and two, there was a divide in the church along the lines of east and west that resulted basically in Passover being observed on two different days. Now this division in the church over Passover continued for another 135 years until we get to AD 325. Okay, so what happened in AD 325? What happened is the Council of Nicaea. Now, as many people are aware, Arianism was the primary issue dealt with by the Council. However, one of the lesser known issues also dealt with by the Council was over what day to observe Passover. Now, up until the time of the Council, everyone, meaning Christians in both the East and the West, they were all observing Passover during the same week that the Jews were likewise keeping the Passover. Even though the churches in the West had insisted on keeping Passover on Sunday, they still determined which Sunday, based on the biblical lunar calendar, and the one that coincided with the week of 14 Nisan. However, this would all change after the Council of Nicaea. The Council not only sided with the churches in the West, in that they mandated universal observance of Passover on Sunday, they took it a step further and also changed the calendar 
used to determine which Sunday. They dropped the biblical lunar calendar, the one that the Jews used to calculate Passover, to the solar one that the Romans followed. Now because of the calendar change, necessity arose and they either invented, or perhaps they simply borrowed from paganism, either way, they implemented a new method for calculating the day in which to observe this new Passover. If anyone wants to charge Easter with having roots in paganism, this would actually be an appropriate place to start. Now, of course, because Jesus did in fact raise from the dead on Sunday morning, this at least on the surface appears to support the claim that the annual event we call Easter is a celebration of the resurrection. However, we are talking today about the origins of Easter, not what it is today. Therefore, with regards to this claim that Easter is a celebration of the resurrection, we need to remember three things. One, the early church, and this is not debatable, they were celebrating Passover. That's literally what they called it in their own language. Even today, if you go to a Latin or Greek-speaking country, their name for Easter in their own language is Passover, which is the day that Jesus died, not the day that he rose from the dead. Now, number two, the day of Christ's resurrection, which fulfilled the Feast of First Fruits, not Passover, mind you, nonetheless, it still happened during the same week as Passover, which is to say that even if you wanted to celebrate the resurrection of Christ, for one, you should call it the Feast of First Fruits, not Passover, but two, why would you separate it from 14 Nisan? the actual day of Passover, or from the lunar calendar used to determine the date of Passover. Now granted, this year, Passover and Easter fall in the same week, but this is not always the case. When you use the solar calendar versus the lunar calendar, there are times when they fall as far as a month apart. Now three, For nearly 300 years, and let's put that into perspective here, America is only 247 years old. So for nearly 50 years longer than America has been a country, half the Christian world continued to celebrate Passover, the event of Christ's death, on the biblical date of 14 Nisan. So for the first 300-ish years of the church, and that's a long time, mind you, there was not universal agreement, nor the universal practice of celebrating the resurrection of Christ on an annual basis. Rather, what they were celebrating was Passover, the event of Christ's death. So what do you think? Was the ancient church right in making these changes? If God specifically states the date we should observe something, does the church have the authority to change the date of said observation? Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think. Well, that will do it for today's episode of Typology and Prophecy. If you watched to the end, you are super awesome. If you are blessed, please smash that like button and consider purchasing one or both of my books. They're available on Amazon. Links are in the description and pinned comment below. Thank you so much for joining me today and God bless.